Here's one of the latest interviews from Rock and Metal Revival. If you want to hear the whole show, go to rmrshow.com. From the brand new album from Raven, Extermination, there is Destroy All Monsters on Rock and Metal Revival. And dude, I know you've been a Raven fan for a long time. Oh yeah, I've been looking forward to hearing this, and I, I've not been disappointed. I love everything about it, man. Well, we are fortunate enough to, and honored to have on the phone with us on the show today, John Gallagher, bassist and singer of Raven. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, how are you doing, guys? Good to be here. It's uh, it's awesome to have you on the show, and uh, we're really excited about the first uh, new uh, Raven album in six years. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the process. It's it's been a while since we heard from Raven. Yeah, it's, I mean we've been out and about. Uh, the last album, More Crew Fire, was a uh, kind of a vindication for us after you know dealing with Mark's accident and all this other stuff. So it was great to come you know, back out there swinging with a really good album. So eventually, after touring it to death and then doing the DVD and touring that, it was time to do a new record. And we just, you know, took stock and said, well, you know, we like the last album, but, but, you know, where do we go from here? So it's kind of a little bit of an evaluation like we did way back when with All For One. We decided to make every song heavy, maybe make the arrangements a little more... You know, a little more, not not as nuts, a little bit more focused, as it were. Mm-hmm. And really just go for the heavy, go for the riff, go for the songs. So it kind of ended up being like all for one, meet Soggy Tech the Fear in a back alley with uh, pool cues, you know, beating <laughs> the shit out of each other. So And so we got that, but we got more because uh, we just raised the bar. We worked really hard on the songs and the arrangements, you know, like, does this piece need to be here? Is it as good as it could be? And, you know, really throwing it between the three of us and just picking stuff apart and building it back up and making it as strong as possible. And then after all that analytical stuff was done, we just went in the studio, as we do as a band, and played it. No click tracks, no Pro Tools cheating. Nice. None of that Beautiful. nonsense. I mean, yeah, everyone uses Pro Tools. It's a great tool but that's all it is yeah. if you're using it as an excuse to build up your drum tracks or fix everything you do there's a certain point where it's like you know who are you fooling <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you know we had basic tracks pretty much done in about five or six days you know we had to do a few shows with accept which were a lot of fun then we came back did another you know few days worth of overdubs and stuff and that was pretty much it now you guys no, did a um, Kickstarter pro Kickstarter with this. How'd that go? Yeah. Did you guys like it? Or yeah, it was really cool because uh, we knew with this the it's all in the preparation, and the preparation was getting mighty expensive because yeah. uh, the three of us live all over the states, uh, and you know you can do only so much over the internet and on the phone and what have you to. You know, to really get the to do this right. I mean, we're a band. You got to do it as a band. Mm-hmm. So you got to be in the same room. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not one of those outfits that's going to say, "Well, I'll do my guitar tracks in uh, Florida or on the beach, and I'll just email them to you tomorrow." You know, that's <laughs> yeah. not. I'm sure Mark would love to do that, but we won't <laughs> let him. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that, that's that's, that's kind of how that worked out. Well, I, I just saw that you guys uh, toured the U.S. late last year. Do you have any plans on uh, getting back out around the U.S. with this new CD? Yes, absolutely. I mean, first off, we've got uh, Japan in July. Um, when we get back from Japan, we're doing two weeks in the States late July. Uh, probably more East Coast touching into the middle a little bit. It's pretty much filling holes from the last tour. We've got a new agent, so it's just a... You know, getting my feet wet, seeing how that all works out. And then we go to Europe for ooh, six or seven weeks in September, which is going to be a lot of fun too. A lot of new places we've never been to, kind of Eastern Bloc stuff. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun, as well as the, you know, our good friends in the Netherlands and Germany and France and what have you. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then following that and Possibly this would be say, the very end of the year or beginning of 2016, a more expense, uh, extensive U.S. set of dates. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I was just seeing that you guys opened for Metallica uh, down in South America in front of that those huge crowds that, that show up in South America. That had to be uh, quite a rush to play that many people. Yeah, that was uh, pretty nuts and, uh, you know, a lot of fun. They were really late getting there and they kept putting off when they wanted us to go on. So it was nice and dark, so we had all the lights. <laughs> Uh, they weren't playing any incidental music, so the crowd were just quietly freaking out. And then when the lights went down, they just went bananas. They really did. They went crazy. I never heard anything like that. Wow. And, you know, I've, I've been to soccer games in England and all this, where I've never heard a crowd that big, that noisy. <laughs> and, you know, we went out to Metallica. People treated us real well. We had great sound, great lights. And it was great to hang out with those guys after the show for a little bit before they went on. Because it's been a long time and, you know, it was pretty emotional, really, to reconnect with them, you know. Yeah, because you took like, them a lot we're all, looking at each, all looking at each other like, well, we're all still here. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, you took them out on, their, on your first tour, right, of the U.S.? That's right, yeah, yeah. when they were little kids back in 1983, it's nice. true. That would have been and, great, uh, so. you know, there's a bond, there's a connection. We all went to war together, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, John, you know, like Jerry was saying, you know, 1983, Raven out on the road, and, and uh, you've seen a lot of changes in the music industry and hard rock and metal over the years. What do you think has been the biggest change for you? Uh, probably the internet. Uh, that's obviously changed the business completely. But uh, it's one of those things that, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. The focus has reverted back to, you know, seeing a live band. Seeing the live bands, you know, get out there and, you know, entertain people. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bands go out there and don't entertain people. And, you know, we're still suffering from cookie monster syndrome. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, there are bands out there playing real music with you know, real singing and real interaction and unbelievably even improvisation. It's uh, wow. heartwarming <laughs> to see, you know, it's it's good. So, and that's, I mean, that's our stock and trade and that's what we've done all these years and we'll continue to do. Now, when I was first got this album, I started listening to it. I was like, I wonder if John's going to be able to hit those high notes, do those screams. And you haven't lost anything. How have you managed to keep your voice and be able to scream like that? Uh, PG Tips T from England. <laughs> There's a plug. <laughs> uh, there you go. No, I mean, I, I look after myself. I've still got all the same range of hard way back when in you yeah. know, 1981 or what have you. I've got the same notes. Uh, I just can control it all a little better. Nice. The breathing, you know, uh, you know. Like a, like a fine wine. Exactly, exactly. Just, just don't smell my feet. You'll be all right <laughs> if you don't do that. Hey, hey John. But, uh, no, touch, touch wood. It, it's, you know, I, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any of the stupid stuff. Uh, so as long as I get a good night's sleep, I am good to go. Because nice. that's, you know, when you're on the road, it's tough for that. Because, you know, you want to hang out and have fun. But yeah. you don't get any sleep. The voice is the first thing to go, so. It's yeah. true. You've got to be true. a little careful with that. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, is there any new bands out there that you that you hear that that you you're really digging right now? Yeah, this. I mean, on the more metal side, there's we took a band out with us tail end last year, Night Demon. They're really good. Cauldron from Canada are really good. Uh, I just heard a band from Sweden called Air Raid. I heard stuff. them. Yeah, they're yeah. excellent. Yeah, and then more on the you know, on the fringes, different kinds of music. Is a band we actually got to see in Holland, uh, Rival Sons. Great. Oh, yes. Love that. It's kind of like a retro feel, but, you know, again, real playing, the real deal. Touch of Zeppelin in it. It's excellent. And there's a few bands like that, touching right. on the 60s, 70s. A band called Blues Pills with a girl singer. Really good. So mm. it's... Uh, and then, you know, other stuff, I like the last Glenn Hughes thing, the, uh, what was it called, California, California Breed. California Breed, that yeah. That was a great record. Winery Dogs, that's yes. an awesome oh, yeah. album. They were, I saw them live, they were great. Yeah, we saw them. So, you yeah, know, it's promising, good stuff. Now, the song, uh, Feeding the Monster, you think that song could have benefited from adding some cowbell? 
Uh, they could all benefit from using cowbell <laughs> constantly. <laughs> cowbell. We, we needed to hire the cowbell orchestra. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, now the now the new album extermination is out in stores. Uh, people can get it everywhere. Yeah, and, uh, get it. And we yeah we give it the two thumbs up. But we want to know, uh, John, where can we tell people to keep in in touch with Raven so they know when you guys are coming to their town and the latest news on you guys. Good, good, good. Yeah, you can obviously hit me up on the band up on Facebook, and then there's the websites www.ravenlunatics.com. <laughs> So we'll be, uh, you know, keeping everyone well apprised of what's happening. But, uh, you know, if you're out there, check it out. It's uh, a damn good record, if I do say so myself. Yeah, yeah it cool. is. Yeah, it, we'll makes, it, it makes me want to go pick up my guitar and start just fucking cranking it. That's it. Start hitting. Start <laughs> yeah. breaking stuff. There yeah, you know? I just want to break shit. I was watching, I was watching those riots in freaking Baltimore, and I, had, I was listening to this, and it was perfect. It was like yeah, the perfect a sound- soundtrack, man. Soundtrack to a riot. Yeah, yes. there you go. it was. It worked. It worked so, out great. Like buy an album, get get it with four pieces of concrete free with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's oh awesome. my god! Not not to make fun of that because no. that is a that's horrible a, thing a horrible going on thing, there. Yeah, yeah that's. I hope that all gets taken care of. The whole thing sucks, but exactly. Yeah. You know. It's it's ugly, but one way or another, it's got to come out. You know, exactly. there's a lot of bad, a lot of bad shit going on. So, yeah, you, know, you can't you can't really blame people after a while if they get you know pissed off, basically yeah. pissed on for fifty years. Yeah, someone's gonna get really pissed off and do some shitty stuff like that. So, That's true. That happens. Hey, John, one of the one of the tunes that both Jerry and I are just loving off this CD is a song called Thunder Down Under. Can you tell us a little bit about that song? Yeah, well, you know, look, I'm down. He said in an extremely bad start for an Australian accent, so I'll stop right now. <laughs> uh, my brother came up and said, hey, I've got these riffs. They're vaguely ACDC-ish. What if we do a song about Bon Scott? I go, oh, brilliant. <laughs> Call it Thunder Down Under. Um, you know, came up with the words really quickly, and we just jammed it out there. Joe had the idea for having a little breakdown in the middle, and... Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun to play because it, it really has their feel, but it's definitely raving at the same time. Yeah, very um, sure. You know, Bon Scott, what can I say? I mean, we were lucky when we were kids, we saw him like three times with ACDC. Mm. And, you know, an icon. All right. Just, yeah. a, just, a, just a great character. Yeah. Well, John, we appreciate and, uh, you taking the time to come on Rock and Metal Revival, and we hope that Raven gets into the upper Midwest because uh, we'd love to come out and see you. Oh, yes, sir. We'd love to do that. All right. Let's play Thunder Down Under from the new Raven CD called Extermination on Rock and Metal. I'll try to call and put some shrimp on a barbie. There you go. <laughs> To catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radios on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Rock 101 KLOL on Saturdays 11 p.m. Eastern on Z-Rock 106.9 KKZR Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Uncontrolled Noise Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on uncontrollednoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations. Enjoy this edition of Rock and Metal Revival. <laughs> 